Hello and welcome to another update video about Bitcoin. We're approaching the weekly candle close and um, we have a situation in which Bitcoin is just sort of moving sideways, very short term. The weekend has basically just been a sideways move. So just a reminder of the main scenario we're currently following doesn't mean this needs to work out like that. It also doesn't mean that there are not any other scenarios. There are plenty of scenarios at the moment that are on the table due to the um, poor price action Bitcoin has been developing since it um, rallied off the 10th of March low. This year was decent price action, a proper impulse to the upside here in a five wave move. Um, we then had this correction to the downside in a possible wave two that is currently a bullish interpretation. Doesn't mean there couldn't be new bear market lows. In fact, I'm leaning towards we have the low in already, but I'm just saying I'm just leaning towards it. Um, I'm not very confident. I wouldn't be surprised if we make new bear market lows. But at the moment, because we are holding support, you know, we have certainly some levels to watch. This is good news. As soon as as long as we have some levels to watch, we know how we can measure our risk, um, what we need to measure our risk against, because below these levels, probabilities for new bear market lows will increase, in my opinion. Um, but yeah, at the moment, um, I'm leaning towards the upside still. And one of the reasons for that is the proper five wave impulsive structure of the November lows and the technicals yeah, on the daily relative strength index, if I zoom in, we can see that the RSI, while the MACD is still increasing negative momentum, well, that's not too much of a problem. I'm not saying we've seen the low yet, but what I'm saying is that the last time we were oversold on the daily on the Bitcoin chart was the 10th of March, which was a decent low. It was a substantial low. It was, um, a low that we anticipated, where we anticipated a reversal, also based on the daily RSI, because the daily RSI, if it gives an oversold reading on the daily, this is, this is pretty, pretty much a good, reliable signal um, to call a bottom. Doesn't always work, but it works you know, maybe 80% of the time. I haven't, I haven't looked through the previous, um, you, know, how really, you know, how often it really worked, but it, it does work pretty often. And in a bull run, or at least in an uptrend, we do see oversold readings, but higher lows on the price charts, which means if we now come down on the price chart, make a higher low yeah, compared to the 10th of March low, and the RSI is also oversold, that would be a pretty, pretty bullish signal. So that's something I'm watching, um, certainly. Looking at, for example, here the weekly chart, yeah, looking at the weekly chart, we are also here in an uptrend on the um, RSI. The MACD still has a bullish crossover, yeah, which is working out. There is currently no strong reversal. The two week chart, which is also very relevant, is still pushing strongly to the upside. We haven't even got a bullish cross or a cross above the zero line here yet on the MACD. And the RSI still has plenty of space of moving higher. These are the long term indicators. The monthly continuously is re and has been reducing negative momentum. Uh, if that kicks through, this will be quite bullish. But the monthly MACD can, you know, can deal with short term fluctuations. No problem. Wouldn't impact this too much. Okay. Um, so yeah, this is pretty good. Uh, technicals aren't too bad on the Bitcoin chart, in my opinion. And um, I'm waiting for that oversold reading on the relative strength index. Okay. So this is going to be good. But yeah, on the on the four hour chart, um, if we just take a look, so we still have the scenario here where I'm looking at this bullish interpretation and I'm saying there's a good chance that we're now in this third wave, but the direct escalation in the third wave wasn't ready. So what I'm watching for here is now a pullback in this wave two into the region between 26.7K and 22K, um, whereas 26.7 is probably really on the very first level, ideally a bit lower, ideally at least to 25.3K. Um, and there we could finish somewhere there, we could finish this wave too. And then rally in a third wave of a third. Now, the alternative would be 
slightly different. Uh, the alternative would be that uh, we had a wave one, two, three. This was the four. Yeah, we had an ABC flat here and then a five. Now that's not my primary. It's not my primary because this four, if the fourth wave was sitting down here on the 10th of March, it would be quite a deep fourth wave, not ideal, therefore not following it as a primary expectation, but also possible. And then it could, in a wave two, it could come down a bit deeper, okay? Um, but the point is, with the current scenario, as long as we're dropping, uh, as long as we're holding 22K immediately sort of bullish, yeah, but there is still downside potential. Below 22K, new bear market lows would get more into focus. I would get more concerned about them but um, the, it's not necessarily bearish then. It will really only be bearish when also of this alternative count we're dropping through support. What kind of support that is, I'm gonna talk about that when we get closer to that. Don't wanna confuse people. And of course, we still have the possibility for a bearish count where we say, okay, we had here something like an ABC structure, only in three waves up. Yeah, five up, three down, five up. That would be an explanation for this short wave down because B waves can be very, you know, short. Um, so it would then be an A wave, a B wave, that's possible, and a C wave up, so an early C wave top. If we do something very bearish now, you know, if, if for example, um, you know, we, we break below 22K, then this is going to become much more in the focus here, far, and we would do something like that and make new bear market lows. And this is still possible, okay? But these are all the scenarios here on the um, higher time frame that I'm observing very closely. Then on the one hour chart, um, we still have the situation that in this wave two, so we're zooming in, right? We're looking at this wave two now, and then off this wave two, that uh, obviously it's, so it's an ABC correction, that there's a good chance that this A wave is still unfolding. The A wave I'm currently, <coughs> currently counting as a five wave move. One, two, three, four, five. And I'm watching at the moment still for a higher wave four. That what we're just doing is basically a micro setup here. Um, a, B, C in wave four. Wave four should ideally go into the region between 27.9 and 28.8K as an A, B, C. This is really just a micro level. This can change quite quickly. And um, ideally, this is turning around now if this is going to, to happen, right? I mean, as long as it's holding like 27.3K, no problem. This could still rally in a C wave. Below that, it would um, make me favor that the fourth wave is already over. But this is really just micro, micro counting. Um, then an A wave should be complete. Then a B wave should be done. This would be quite a bit of a relief rally, maybe next week. And then afterwards a C wave. Now this B wave can can take quite a while. Um, overall, this entire correction could play out over various weeks. Oops. But yeah, this is sort of where we are currently. This is the situation around Bitcoin. Not much change from the previous videos, but I wanted to give you a bit more of an extended update before the new week starts. We do have some catalysts next week. Yeah, we have um, not much on Monday going on. But on Tuesday, it's, uh, we've got CB consumer confidence. No, that's not a massive catalyst, but can lead to a bit of volatility on the, you know, around the S&P 500, DXY and so on. So it might impact crypto to a degree. Then we've got advanced GDP on Thursday, unemployment claims. And on Friday, it's probably gonna be a decent day of volatility, um, end of next week. So we've got um, core PCE, yeah, inflation data currently forecasted at 0.3%. And also the employment cost index, but CPE is probably, a PC is probably gonna lead to a little bit more volatility. Um, it depends on what the numbers are, right? Okay, that's my update about Bitcoin. Hope you liked the update. If you did, please hit the like button, leave a comment and subscribe. And if you really like the content, then please check out the channel membership. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye-bye.